I feel like being creative. And since there's still a bunch of welding to do on this Model A here where we chopped the top last week, I think we'll find something fun to do with this. That way we can kind of jump around and continue welding on this chop as we do whatever it is we're about to do. You guys don't think I ever have a actual plan out here, do you? Nope. I do have an idea though. So when we built the roll pan for that little Chevy, actually what we did was completely modify a roll pan that was originally for a, a Toyota Tacoma and we made it work on this Chevy. But we didn't like the license plate box that was on it, so we made our own. But I kept it, of course, because you never know. Somebody might want to use it on a 1928 Model A someday. I also have that Model A tail light. I think we're gonna pull that down, take that tail light and this license plate box thing, see if we can make something, make something cool and creative on that Model A. can't find my drill anywhere. Found it. Right there where I used it last. So here's what I'm thinking. If we graft this into the into the back of that Model A, and this will sit in there, we'll just have a single tail light in the middle above our license plate. And since that one single tail light is going to look cool, but it's not going to be enough for me, safety-wise, and all these idiots driving around, I don't trust them. So what I'm going to end up doing is some little LEDs high in the back window. I don't want to see those though until they're lit up. Let's just get these rivets apart. All right, we got what we wanted off of there. We got the tail light. This bracket here, it's gonna it's gonna need some straightening out. That means hammers. All right, so we got that straightened out and that can bolt in there like with the license plate. Actually, I don't, maybe that's not necessary. So this has a provision for a license plate light but so does our Model A tail light. So I think we can get rid of the one in this, keep it on, keep the tail light, and then maybe that could just bolt up to this like that. Yeah. Then it's more permanent and on purpose. But I do think that we're getting a little too far ahead of ourselves here. I think we'll just, just start with this and then we'll figure out this. So we got this hole here that I want to get rid of anyway. So I think we'll put the license plate down that far. That way we're getting rid of that hole at the same time. We'll get this recessed in there. I'm gonna add an angle like thus. Just like how we said we didn't want on our mini truck. Since we don't really have a good spot to measure from along the bottom, we're gonna measure from this body line. We'll measure down from there to make sure we get this license plate straight. So we'll go 23 inches down from that line. We'll make it 24. Cool thing about a project like this though is that things don't need to be perfect. In fact, if it's not, it's more character. Just kidding. 
Nature and mishaps along the life of a hundred year old car make the character not being lazy and doing a crappy job. Working way down there on the floor sucks. Bifocal safety glasses for all us blind dads out there. Because safety first, guys, always. I don't know about these. The world keeps going in and out of focus. So I done cut too much. That's okay. That's okay. So that right there is exactly what I was thinking. All right, I got that tacked on there. And then it just stopped. And I have a pretty good idea why. Don't! Oh! Son of a Urgh, that sucks. At least we got it on there. Let's take this license plate and just kind of see what it looks like. Magnets. I'll have to go to the store and get some, get some welding wire. But before that, let's take this taillight apart. See what kind of condition this is in. The glass is in good shape. The one part that I really want to see what condition it's in is what's inside of this that I always just thought was the coolest thing. And I'm going to love it in the middle of that car right above the license plate. I think it's going to look super cool. And that's it right there. It's all intact for the most part. The rust hole there and kind of over here kind of got a little stamp rivet thing that hold all these three pieces together we could take that off and kind of maybe get rid of some of the the rust on on this stop here we could just wire brush that rust and paint it with a rust encapsulator and, and run it in, in this car. I'm pretty sure they, they make repops of this kind of thing, but I mean, how cool is it that this is the original stuff? So I'm pretty excited about this, actually. Ooh, let's grab a light. So we got running light down there. And when you hit the brake, How cool is that? All right, we gotta go to the store. All right, we got some welding wire here. So we got a lot of sheet metal welding to do on both the Model A and the Chevy Love. So I wanted to get the thinnest wire I could. This is 024. We wanna keep it small when we're doing sheet metal stuff because it carries less heat. So that'll help with the metal wanting to move around and warp. or blow a hole in it when we're welding. All right, now we can get back to work. First thing we gotta do is get this car up on the lift. Just kidding, we don't have anything like that. Forgot to turn the gas on. Now that and everything that we did on this chop top, you can see that none of this has been cleaned up and prepped to weld properly. It's just tacked on there. It's surprisingly welding good the way it is, but we all know that's not the way to do it. We'll give it a once over with this die grinder. Probably starting down there with the license plate since that's what we've been working on here today. So we can move along with that.
Let's play around with this light a little bit. We're not gonna need the opening in the bottom of this bucket that was originally for a license plate light. So we're gonna fill that in, shave it. I think I learned my lesson. Oh. Nope. <laughs> Lucky I didn't cut myself. Bulb just shattered. A little better luck that time. I don't want to use those kind of bulbs. I want to do something else in here, like some LEDs, but not just like an LED that will go into those sockets. I want to get rid of that completely. I have a couple laying around that I was kind of experimenting with when we were doing the, the side marker lights and the love. I eventually just decided to shave them off, but I got these. They're like cheap Amazon LED side marker lights. Maybe we can get them to work in there. I mean, they'll fit with a little trimming on this outer plastic area. And these have a, a dimmer running light and a brighter brake light. So they could work in there quite well. I can actually cut that plastic flange off with scissors. So they'll fit in there. Just take this this chrome reflector piece out for now. Probably end up putting it back in there. I don't know. But this bulb socket, that's got to come out completely. We'll do that. got that socket out it's attached to this divider that was in there dividing the brake light and the, the tail light the parking or running light or whatever and I'm gonna want to keep that so I think what we'll do is cut this tab with the socket I think we'll cut that off and then just tack weld this divider back in here Just threw a couple self tappers in there for now. We have to have that divider in there anyway, because it's what this glass lens screws onto. Well, they go in there. Wonder how well that's gonna work. So I was thinking, Instead of using brackets to hold this light on, we can come up with a better idea. I mean, if we had brackets on there, this thing would be sticking way out, which I guess isn't the end of the world. It wouldn't look that bad, but just brackets on the license plate or whatever, it just seems kind of chintzy. So I was kind of thinking, what if we made a bucket that would recess into the body a little bit, and then we could put this in the bucket and use these studs that would have went on them brackets to, to hold it in right here. I think something like that would be much better. So I went ahead and cut a four inch circle with, with our handy air saw here, body saw, whatever you want to call it. Either way it cuts a hole just like that. I'm kind of thinking we should toss that taillight in there just to kind of see what it looks like, huh? That's a tight fit. Let's 
Put a license plate on there. I like that. I like that a lot. I do have a question though. So we were gonna fabricate and weld in a, a bucket to put that taillight in, right? But this is all front-loaded stuff in this bucket. The, the lights, the lens, the trim piece here. Technically those are all in a bucket. So why can't a guy just weld this to the car? I don't have an answer for that. So I'm thinking as we ponder that, you know what I would like to see? I would like to see this thing lit up on the car. I have a 12 volt power supply. We have some wire. So I know that, well, I mean, obviously this car is not ready to be worried about tail lights. We got a lot of stuff we should be doing on the Chevy Love here because I'd really like to get that thing done. But our head supervisor, Missy, she's not doing so well, guys. And, and to be honest, that's got me all sorts of messed up. So I feel like having fun and being creative, doing what I do best. Pushing the feelings aside and getting lost in the garage. So these wires here, we got a ground on both, we got a running light on both, and we got a brake light on both. I don't want to use the running light on both, I just want to use the running light on the bottom one. And we'll probably do brake light on both of them. So we'll, uh, we'll just twist our ground on here. Then we'll twist the one running light that we want. Put that one on there. I think that's the right one. Fire this up and see what it looks like. It works. Our LED moved though. That whole lens will be lit up. But I'm not gonna take it apart again. Let's try the brakes. All right, here we go. <laughs> well, that's cool. That's so cool, I wanna show the wife. She ain't gonna care, but I'm gonna show her. What are you doing? You gotta come here for a second. I gotta show you something. Look at that. Ready? Hey guys, she likes it. Look at Daisy's tater tot. <laughs> Daisy doesn't have a tail. She's got a tater tot. <laughs> That's pretty dang cool. I do think I want to get some better LEDs though, and probably some white ones. If they were white, probably be a little brighter. And if they were better, better quality lights to begin with, they'd be brighter. So I'm still pondering on that, just welding that bucket in thing. I do, however, see that that needs something else. And this won't be permanent, but it'll be fun to do it and see what it looks like. I've been a fan of pinstriping since, well, since I was a fan of custom cars. I think it was only about eight years ago or so when I finally picked up a brush for the first time myself. Oh, I spilled. I'm gonna tell my wife that's blood. <laughs> That's pretty cool. First color, I'm gonna do another one. I think we'll go with white. Pinstriping has been around for a very long time, like 
couple hundred years or something. They used to do it to accent the lines on buggies and stuff. From what I know about modern hot rod style pinstriping is that it was Von Dutch who kind of brought that to life. Actually, I think he started by covering up a scratch and then he'd do it on the other side symmetrically and then just coming up with a design. But hey, I wasn't there, I don't know. I'm digging that and we were just having fun with this ltscustgarage.com for hand done pinstripe art some cool t-shirts all that stuff helps keep these videos going thanks for stopping by to hang out with me today guys I appreciate you all me and Missy are gonna go hang out inside you guys feel free to stick around and watch some more <laughs>